Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing a book and it is Halo Last Light. Now, I'm a really big Halo fan. I have played all the Halo games. I've read most of the books up until Last Light. I'm currently reading Smoke and Shadow, so expect a review on that when I'm done. Uh, there's been a big gap in content since Halo Wars 2 and Halo Infinite games-wise. So I wanted to get back into Halo, see what it's all about again. And uh, I just got back into Last Light. So my review will contain spoilers. I'm not going to go through the plot points step by step by step. You can just check that out on Halopedia if you just want a complete plot summary. So basically, I'm just going to give the positives, negatives, and uh, my opinion on if you should pick up this book if you're a Halo fan or just a science fiction reader, if you're just a regular uh, reader who likes to read books. So I'm going to start off with um, kind of the main thing that's been going on in the story. And I would characterize this as like a part murder mystery in the beginning and then more of a action uh, book, if that kind of makes sense. The beginning of the story kind of starts off with uh, around this planet called Gao. And the main character in this book is a woman called Inspector Lopez. She is an inspector. She's kind of like a detective. Um, and she's trying to figure out some of the murders that are going on in this planet. Uh, there's this big cave system where people are going down and they're getting healed for some reason. There's this miraculous healing uh, property properties going on in, this, in these caves. But then all of a sudden, these people are uh, who are going down there end up murdered. And it's her job to kind of figure out why that is going on. So she gets the help of Blue Team uh, because it is kind of a, a scenario where they're could be, you know, there could be a killer on the loose, um, could be um, some sort of threat going on down there. So she has the help of Blue Team to kind of help her figure out, okay, what's going on and, you know, who are who's behind this murders, who's behind these murders. Is it Covenant? Is it humans? What's going on down here? So uh, she's the main char character of the story and uh, she, in the beginning, I was not really... I don't, not impressed. I don't know if that's the right word. I didn't really like her character. Um, she, one of the big things that I, that I don't like about the way the Halo universe is right now is that everyone has been piling on the Spartan 2s and the Spartan 3s and the Spartan, uh, not Spartan 4s, but the previous Spartan generation, basically just the 2s and 3s because they were uh, abducted. Uh, the Spartan 2s were abducted as children. Spartan 3s volunteered because their planets and parents were killed during the Covenant War, and it's all about the politics of whether or not this was ethical. You know, it was ethical for Halsey to do this uh, in order to win, uh, first of all, the Insurrectionist War, but then, you know, put them in battle for Human Covenant War. So that has been in a lot of the books, and, you know, it's it gets kind of annoying because I feel like this has been shoehorned into the... To the uh, to the novels and to the games, you then Halo 4, Halo 5, because uh, there's really, you know, not a uh, big, huge threat other than the Forerunners, and so I felt like they need to create this threat in order, or this, you know, plot point, this negative plot point, just to kind of find something else to push, push the story along with the Spartans. So I haven't been a big fan of that in the fiction, uh, and you do see this a little bit, uh, in the book with Lopez's way of thinking um, and the and the reason why she kind of uh, picks out some of the Spartans as the murder suspects. I, you know, as someone who knows the Spartans uh, and their background, I kind of knew that they weren't going to be, you know, the ones responsible for the murders. So I kind of felt like, you know, it was annoying always kind of reading her chapters in the beginning because... You know, she thought that the Spartans were the reasons for these murders. And I can't really, you know, the Spartan 2s, I definitely don't see them committing murders. Spartan 3s, very, very, you know, far-fetched because, you know, they received, you know, some of the similar training. Uh, but we do learn in this story, you know, they really need to take their medications to make sure that they're calm in combat situations. And you do see a little bit of what happens when they're not on... Um, their medications sort of balance their mood, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting because it gives them, uh, you know, what, what could happen 
when they're not on their medications, will they make some brash decisions? Will they not follow orders? So you do see a little bit in that book, in, the, in this in the book, and I thought that was definitely uh, kind of interesting. Another thing that I do like about this book is that we do get a little bit more of Blue Team. Uh, in Halo 5, we did get Blue Team for, you know, the Master Chief missions, but we didn't really get to see each member of Blue Team uh, you know, characterized. We did see, you know, Linda, Kelly, and, and Fred, but they didn't really, you know, they were there to support Master Chief, but we didn't really see their characters progress in any way. Uh, if you were just a new player, you really had no idea what these characters were all about, uh, their different personalities and stuff. So you do see a lot of that with Fred in the story. He kind of goes back and forth with Lopez kind of helping her investigate what's going on in the story. And I definitely thought that was pretty cool. You do learn a little bit more about Fred. He definitely reminds me of Master Chief, just how stoic and kind of to the point is. But he does have a little bit more personality, uh, a little bit more humor and stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool. Kind of nice comparison to Master Chief um, because we don't really see, you know, Chief joke around and stuff. Um, so if you are a fan of Blue Team, def there's a lot of Blue Team in here. Uh, you learn a lot about Fred and his interactions with, you know, just regular regular uh, humans like Lopez, regular um, soldiers, and uh, different parts of, you know, the, the government. Another thing that I did like was the all the different kind of factions that were in the story. So, you know, we had the UNSC blue team, we had a little bit of Oni, we had the government on Gao, and then we had, you know, like another group, that was not really a, a terrorist organization, but they sort of wanted to take over Gao, uh, the planet Gao, and put their own little kind of government in place. So we had all these different factions trying to do what they thought was best. You know, Oni wanted to have their, you know, have their own opinion on what's going on, UNSC, all these different factions kind of, you know, trying to get, you know, their agenda accomplished. Um, and so what we learn uh, eventually uh, through the murder mystery is that it's not any of the Spartans. It's not a human. It's actually a forerunner known and the forerunner in Scylla known as Intrepid Eye. Anytime the forerunners are in a story, especially forerunner and Scylla's or AI's or um, the engineer, there's an engineer in the story who we learn a little bit more about, which I thought was really cool, big, cool part of the story. Um, Another thing I like about this book is that there are various factions sort of trying to use their own political influence to take advantage of the situation that's going on, Gal. You know, there's a murder mystery kind of going on. There's people getting healed. We're not really sure what's happening. So you have, you know, the UNSC and ONI with their own agendas. You have the, the, the government of Gal that's, you know, trying to figure things out. Uh, and then you have this other group that contains a whole bunch of different uh, species, you know, humans, brutes, some grunts, uh, jackals, and they're trying to do their own little thing uh, that gets explain explained a little bit more on in the book. And you also have the fact that the Covenant War is over, it's right after the end of the war, and so do the Oni and the UNSC, do you, do, are they supposed to, you know, be fighting with other factions of Covenant, of humans? You know, is there insurrection coming back? What the heck's going on? Um, you know, the UNSC is trying to bring everyone back uh, into, the, into their governments. And, you know, what is supposed to happen? No one's sure because the war just ended. Uh, one of the big things that I also liked was that there was a forerunner AI um, named Intrepid Eye, and she is kind of behind all of this murder mystery stuff. I won't go into big details, uh, but she's introduced, and uh, essentially she's woken from this hibernation. Uh, she has been in this stasis, and she's woken up, and she still thinks that the Forerunners are the rulers of the galaxy. Um, and so she tries to make contact with the Forerunners, She's very confused as to why, you know, there's humanity, you know, what is she, what's going on? You know, something has changed in the past millions of years uh, since the foreigners were essentially wiped out. Uh, there's also a very interesting character, an engineer, 
by the name of Rome's Alone, and you get to see, you know, what uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, I don't want to give it away, but what is its purpose in the story? So anytime there's a Forerunner uh, Ancilla, Forerunner uh, technologies going on with the uh, engineers and the Ancillas, I definitely like it because I feel there's really not a lot of it in the books, or uh, sorry, in the games. Um, and I, I just always like it. They're so mysterious. You know, you have the engineers basically helping everyone out. They don't really care. They're just like, repairing stuff and helping people out. And, you know, you have a Forerunner who thinks that, you know, the Forerunner, why are the Forerunners all gone? You know, what's going on there? Why are humanity, why is humanity, you know, the, well, they won the war, the rulers of the universe, you know, should they get the mantle? What's going on over there? So definitely, if you like that kind of stuff, it's in here. It's really cool. Uh, however, one of the things that I don't, I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet is the insurrection sort of coming back, kind of. Uh, before the Human Covenant War, there was an insurrection, human versus human, um, outer colonies, inner colonies, basically. And uh, this, you get to see a little bit more of that. Um, and I feel like, you know, I don't really understand why the insurrectionists want to you know kind of go back to the way things were before the human covenant war because dunsc and the spartans basically you know saved them uh without you know the spartans and the unsc fighting the covenant you know the insurrection would is would be useless you know and they're coming back and they're trying to you know, there's a lot of politics going on. Do they want to start another war with the UNSC? Um, they go back to the way how things were before the war, the Covenant War. Um, and so, you know, it's, it feels like another one of those things where it's a plot point that's kind of shoved in, uh, similar to the uh, Spartan Twos and the whole ethical thing. Um, you know, the, the ends justified the means. You know, you may not agree but the Spartans helped save uh, humanity. Um, if the insurrectionists were still screwing around, you know, they during the Covenant War, they would have just made things worse. So, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like 343 has to create another sort of issue. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of all that stuff. So eh, maybe it'll grow on me a little bit when I read more of the novels, but for now, eh, it's kind of just one of those things where it's there. Uh, there needs to be, other than the Forerunners, there needs to be another, uh, you know, villain, I guess, or a point of conflict. So it is what it is. One of the things that I also liked um, in the book was another thing that I liked about the story was that we did get to see a little bit more of the Spartan Threes. Um, another one of the things that I liked was we got to see more of the Spartan Threes. Uh, the Spartan Threes are definitely cool. Um, you get to see them in action. You get to see them, what happens when they don't take their uh, medication. I forget what they call it in the book, but what happens when they don't take their medication, you know, the psychological effects that it has. You know, the fight or flight sort of uh, situations that they're put in. How does that make them react to what's going on? Does it make them go crazy? Do they shut down? Um, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty interesting, pretty cool. You know, should these uh, Spartan 3s even be in combat if, you know, you can't rely on them without them taking their medicine? It was sort of a thing that I was thinking about, you know. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Of course, they're a little bit different than Spartan 2s with their SPI armor, more stealth, more, uh, well, they're tactical, but more stealth-based attacks compared to the Spartan 2s who can, you know, withstand some more, a little bit damage. So you do get to see the interaction between Spartan 2s and Fred with the Spartan 3s, and they do work as a really cohesive unit, um, which I thought, you know, is really, really cool. Um, I love that stuff. Ghost of Onyx, you know, awesome. Um, another thing that I did like was how Troy Denning, the author, kind of described some of the action that was going on in the story once things picked up picked up in the uh, latter half of the book. Um, 
really good rider. He reminded me a lot of Eric Nyland from uh, Fall, Fall of Reach and uh, Ghost of Onyx, or yeah, Ghost of Onyx and uh, did he write First Strike? I think so. Um, but yeah, he reminded me a lot, a lot of those, um, a lot of those books. You know, I, I know they're not a sequel, but it's more of a spiritual successor. I don't know if even that's the right word, but definitely very, very similar. And I did like his writing style, the way he described things with uh, the action, and he made the Spartan twos feel like the way that they acted in the Fall of Reach and some of the previous novels, you know, compared to the games where you didn't really get to see that. So I definitely really like that. Um, it's interesting. It was interesting to see the change in Inspector Lopez uh, from beginning to end. We do see a, a big character change for her. Um, you know, at first she started by, you know, thinking that the Spartans were the enemy in this case, you know, they, she thought that, uh, they were the murderers behind this big plan. Um, and throughout the course of the book with her interactions with the Spartans, uh, especially the Spartan threes and the Spartan three Olivia, we do get to see her character change and look, appreciate kind of what the Spartans, uh, are able to do and how they're able to help her and help, uh, the gal forces on her planet. Um, and she gets the nickname Mom from the Spartan Threes, you know, because she is older and the Spartan Threes are so young. She's always kind of telling them what to do, you know, uh, is this the right thing to do? Y'all, you may get hurt doing this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so it is an interesting little dynamic between Inspector Lopez and, and the uh, uh, Spartan Threes. So I thought that was kind of cool. It's interesting to see. Uh, there's a point at the end of the book, uh, she's given a choice. Uh, by Oni, and, uh, you know, will we get to see Inspector Lopez and Spartan Threes in the future? Maybe. Um, so I think that is uh, definitely kind of a cool little thing that they did was to include her with the Spartan Threes. Um, one of the weaker point, uh, points of the book, I thought, was the uh, opposing faction to the Gao forces. Um, it was led by, I don't even remember his name, you'll have to look it up on Halopedia, but it was led by a human. Um, he wanted to basically kind of take over Gao, and he used some ex-Covenant uh, forces, some people who didn't like, like the Gao government. Um, and you know, there was a lot of brutes in there, and they wanted to come in and do their own thing. Uh, and it was kind of weak. The brutes, uh, the two main brutes in the story, uh, kind of forgettable. Um I, I guess I understood their um, their uh, motivations for doing what they did, but their strategy wasn't really the best. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought it was a weak point in the story. Um, you do get to see a little bit of the action that occurs between them, the Gal forces, and uh, the Spartans, but they were kind of added. It was just kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, I didn't, it wasn't the best way, I think, to handle them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, political stuff going in on the background and uh, on the on the enemy side with the insurrectionists and the uh, uh, the opposing Gao, opposing um, the Gao's government. So it sort of a weak point for me. They didn't seem as maybe strong of a villain or a threat compared to uh, intrepid eye later in the story. So, eh, it's, yeah, I, it wasn't, it was serviceable. How about that? It was serviceable as a villain. So kind of overall, I think that the first half of the book was good, a little slow. Um, you may not like Inspector Lopez, um, in the beginning, but if you are a Halo fan, I would definitely kind of wait it out until it gets to the uh, halfway point of the book and you'll start to see the changes uh, in her character which I think were beneficial it makes her a little bit more interesting and you get to see a little bit more of that action um, definitely better in the in the uh, other half of the book compared to the first uh, the murder mystery plot what was engaging until you do get a kind of you can put the pieces together to figure out what's going on who is the murderer um so it's not like one of those things where it takes all the way 
up to the end to kind of figure out who the, the murderer is, who the, you know, what's going on. Uh, you should be able to figure it out, I would say halfway, maybe two thirds way through the story. So it's, and it's not a surprise. Uh, yeah, there's no big twist or anything. So um, this, I would recommend this book for any Halo fan, especially if you like the Fall of Reach, Ghost of Onyx, if you like Blue Team, if you uh, want to see a little bit more of Blue Team, Spartan 3s, kind of the post-Covenant War stuff. Uh, this book, I think, is one year, maybe the same year, I think, as the end of the Covenant War. So you get to see that right up after the war. There's a lot of tension going on, like I said, between the insurrectionists, outer colony planets, and the UNSC. If you do like the political stuff uh, that goes on in the Halo universe with If you do like the political stuff between ONI and UNSC and the other governments, you know, you're going to like this book because there is definitely a lot of that in there. Um, and if you don't like some of the, if you don't like, I guess, murder mysteries, um, you probably won't like this book because that's kind of the premise of it. Um, so yeah, and if you're a regular science fiction fan, I think you will like this book. Um... You won't know a lot of the backstory and stuff and who the characters are, uh, but it is, it is a good book. It's a good book. For Halo fans, I would give it like a four and a half out of five. And for the regular science fiction fan, I'd probably give it a three and a half to four uh, out of five rating. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a great read. Um, I read it just in a few days and I, you know, I had to kind of keep on going. I kind of just stopped for a while. Um, so yeah, if you do, if you do want to check this book out, I will link a link in the description down below to my Amazon affiliate account. Um, definitely check this out if you are a Halo fan, uh, and if you're itching for some Halo content, uh, since it's been kind of a drought lately. Um, so yeah, uh. Leave a comment down below with any questions you have if you want to kind of talk about the book. I know it's been out for a long, long time, but uh, if you are interested in uh, any more of my thoughts, um, yeah, just leave a comment down below. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Uh, I'm going to start doing a little bit more of this type of stuff, uh, reviews and things that I enjoy like Halo. Um, so I do have some Star Wars books, the new canon, so I'll probably do some reviews on that. Um, and yeah, I'm still kind of learning how to do the reviews and everything. So, uh, uh, stay, stay tuned and I will hopefully get a little bit better, but, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you I'm reading smoke and shadow right now. Halo. So I'm almost done with that one. Uh, we'll see how that goes and I'll make a review of it and I may go back and review some of the older star Wars books that I've already read. So, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.